Give the Lord a big clap. Why God bless you. That's the youth choir on board. Praise God. Now tonight, I'm going to be very brief. I will reserve my message on Sunday when I know I'm going to see the whole house. You know, some youth will not come till on Sunday. Hmm? Those who are upstairs, are they with us? So let them come down. Because today we are going to spend a little bit. We did that yesterday in praying. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Look at your Bible with me. That first Samuel chapter 17. But before we go to first Samuel chapter 17, Revelation 1 6. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1, verse number 6. Revelation chapter 1, number 6. What did he say? He has made us kings and priests unto our God and his father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. What is the last word there? You didn't say amen now. He made us kings. He made us kings. And what? Oh, read again, everybody. One, two, three, go. No, you to read it. Let that scripture have power. Now, wait. What did he make us? Kings and what? Priest. Unto God his father. To him be the glory. Who did he make? We, not heavens, not angels. He made us. Are you with me? Now, Romans chapter 8 verse 19. Read it again with good understanding. For the endless expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons. For the endless expectation of your family is waiting for your manifestation. Let me put it that way. Father, thank you. Manifest your power in Jesus' name. Now sit down. In that same first Samuel chapter 16, we read yesterday, am I correct? Now, am I, am I correct? I'm talking about where I read yesterday because I know Osinachi preached before I did the conclusion. Now, in that, uh, sit down, sit down. In that uh, first Samuel chapter 16, we read verse 10, verse 11. Did you read verse 12? Now, give me 12 and 13. And he sent and brought him and he was ready and without of beautiful countenance and ready to look, I mean, ungodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. When he came, he said, Anoint him, this is who we are looking for. Read that scripture again. All of you didn't read. Please, I, I want to say a few things, but I want to. To understand me, read again. Read it with good understanding. No, wait. Some people didn't start reading with us. Go again. You are not reading like a YouTube. Now, he, he, they are not, now, verse 13, finally. What did he say? And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day day forward. So he arose up and went to Ramah but he didn't went to palace. Ramah was a place of the prophet. They anointed you king. Where are you supposed to head to? Talk to me now. 
How can they make you a senator? And you went to a farm. Now listen. He was anointed a king. But he couldn't enter the palace. Because the oil was already there. Heaven confirmed it. It was the same God who anointed Samuel. I mean Saul. The same prophet. The same oil. But he needed to do something. And many of you have been anointed for many times. Talk to me. We are not despising that oil. But the truth is that exactly what you are dreaming of, you, have not yet, you are not yet there. And I pray for somebody that after this convention, heaven will give you good graduation. You know, this is only temporary department in this section, in this house. Youth and teenagers. Ch children. The permanent one is man and woman. Am I correct? Because there were some who were here yesterday, last year. They were not here this year because marriage have graduated them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, he made them kings. He made us kings and priests that we might rule. Am I correct? David was also anointed to be a king. When God saw, the, when the oil, when, the, when Samuel saw him, he said, anoint him. This is a man that owns the oil. He was anointed in the midst of his brethren. But he went to Rama. He didn't went to palace. Many of us have been anointed. Many of us have been chosen by God. But we are not manifesting. No manifestation yet. Romans 8, 19, what did he say? Read that scripture again. He said, for the earnest expectation of the, of the creature waited, the world waited for the manifestation. Now, hear this. Your manifestation is where men will see your real you. You didn't hear me. You have been anointed. You have been created. But you are waiting for manifestation. Now listen. Manifestation can never come until you pay the price. Did you hear what I said? Now David received the oil. He could not enter the palace. But he needed to pay the price. Now listen to me. If you are a youth in that family. You believe you can change the cost of that family. Get ready. To pay the price. There is a sacrifice you must pay to change the cost of that family. Now, when David was anointed, he could not enter. Saul was not from the lineage of David. The king and the throne was in the lineage of David, but it was lost out of somebody's mistake. Who was the man carrying it? Judah. For scepter shall not depart from you that or the Lord give her. she will come. Why? What happened? If you read Genesis chapter 38, Judah could not have a son that could succeed him. Genesis chapter 38. Can I have verse 4? I don't want to go through long scripture this morning. Or this, I don't want to take you longer than this. And she conceived and bear a son and called his name Honor. Verse 5. What happened? And she conceived again and bear a name called, and his name was called Shela. And was what? At Chizab. When he bear him. Verse 6. And Judah took a wife for her, his first son, whose name was Tamar. Now, I pray for you, youth. I told you yesterday, it's an error for a good girl to marry a bad boy. It's an error for a good boy to marry a bad girl. If you are a king, look for prince. If you are a abuelo, look for area girl. Tell your neighbor, look for your type. Because if you be an area boy, marry an area girl, two of you going to know how to break bottle. Breaking bottle will not be a strange thing. If the man raises his own, you do it. Ah, you go here from the other side. Ah, rah, rah, rah. But how can you be a daughter of a prophet and you marry a prostitute? They gave man prostitute or they gave woman own. <laughs> now, let's read again. I said, I don't want to go into long summer today. I don't know. But Judah took the wife, eh, the first one. Now, verse, that is, uh, verse 7, sorry. Verse 7. And eh. Judas first son was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. A good man giving birth to a bad son. This is another issue again. I pray, look at my prayer for you. There are things I need to show you. And I pray if I have my time in second service, I'm going to run a little bit long sermon. I will show you some things that will help you. Because if you want your son, I mean, if you want your shadow to be behind you, get ready to face the son. 
Life don't just get to where just like that. It must cost you something. I want to be the best in my family. It's not to say it. I wish you above all that may prosper and be good health. That's what God wishes us in the book of John chapter 12. Jesus told them, he said, the poor you will always have. He didn't point anybody. You will choose your position. Read again, verse 8. I want to show you. And Judah said unto honor, go into thy brother's wife that you might marry and raise her a seed and thy brother. Now, let me not go much into deeper in that scripture. Do you know what happened? This woman called Tamar, who was uh, Esther's son, I mean, Judah's first son's daughter-in-law. All the children married, all the sons of Judah married this woman and could not raise a child. And at a time, the man said, you go, when the last child grew up, I will give you so that you marry. Does it mean that this whole of your children will die for one woman? If you read this scripture, you pray for yourself and pray for your family. But especially when you came from a polygamous home. Many of us, we came from family of polygamy. Listen, listen. If your mother married before, before you marry your papa, or your mother married somewhere, it, it, it do happen in a man, it do happen in a woman. Am I correct? There are women who get birth before they married. I'm not condemning them, but you as a son, you as a daughter, you have an assignment. Because if you don't kill that spirit, you will repeat it. If your father married more than one wife, as a young man, don't claim the boy, look down. There is foundation you need to repair. There is foundation you need to deal with. There is a foundation you need to relocate yourself from. Because if not, the same thing will fight you. Judah was a great man pronounced by his father, Jacob. Jacob, who was the father of Judah? Jacob. Jacob was a man of great oil who, rose, who wrestled with God. But his problem was his waste. Why did he curse Judah? Because two of them dragged their friend. That was why he cursed Reuben. Genesis 49. I, I, don't want to, I want to just speak one or two things. Let me show you. Now, Judah was a great man, but his problem was his waste. When Tamar left that house, and he waited because Judah promised him and said, if my last son honor." Rose, right, grew, up, was, grew up as a man I'm going to give him to you to marry so that you can receive Tama waited and waited and waited and it's like this man is playing game on me and maybe he suspects that honor have raised up, grew up as a man you know what he did? she dressed like a harlot you know harlot today is different from harlot of the before did you hear what I said? The old harlot in the Bible days, when they come to Market Junction, where they want to practice their business, they will cover themselves with clothes. Number one, they are ashamed. Number two, people are don't want, so that people will not identify them. They will stay there. When they see a man, woman who wrap and cover her face, that you cannot identify her, that shows number one, she's a harlot. Number two, she's out for business. Not today, when you see a harlot, you open your leg, you open your armpit, you open your back. Lee her lot to your mates. Did they cover up? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> so Tama, position, because Judah was a farmer who went to keep, her, keep his sheep with one of his friends. Now let me warn you as a youth. The one of the greatest problem of us, not just a youth, even a father, is wrong friends. Evil communication, corrupt good manner. You see, the worst thing that can happen to you is for you to have friends who will lure you into bad things and encourage you to do more. Because iron will always sharpen iron. But when you follow the wrong people, I tell you, you are bound to make mistakes. Because a young boy who smokes sugar can never tell you making no smoke. When your friend is, they smoke Morocco, they will tell you why Morocco is good for health. Why people, tell you, people who are telling you not to do, smoke Morocco, whether they know what Morocco they give for body. Because 
they will want to convert you into their fold. And if you don't take time, check people who start smoking cigar, ask them if you have seen one. How did you start it? It was friends that gave them small part of it to put. The first time they put it, <coughs> they say small, small. Tomorrow they go try again. Now small, small. So Tama folded herself on the highway and covered herself. Waiting, why did Tama did what he did? He, number one, Judah at that time was a widower. He has no wife. Number two, he knew that the, Judah was a great, highly anointed man of God, carrying the scepter of Israel, but he's loose to woman. There are men, if you want to play them, bring the gear that is naked. They will hand over their khaki. Talk to me. There are some men, they may not give their wife money for food. They will tell their wife, say, there's no money. If they see a gear with a piece of cloth, they will open it like goat inside fire. I'm telling you, there are some men, if you want to get their reaction, position a gear. Those who are wearing small skirt, tear down here, tear down here, open here. Position it. He goes, he said, even when he tells you, he said, I have a problem. You know, he said, the man, they see clear. Somebody had a fire. So when Judah saw the woman, he turned, look at her. And the friend said, it's like he, loved, he wanted to have this woman. He said, yes. But you don't have money on ground to have. He said, but we'll, we'll work it out. And he went to the woman and said, what is the cost of your assignment for today? I want to have you. The woman said, very smarty. He said, I am on my way to my farm to bring animal. I wish I have animal, I will give you any type you want. The woman said, but it's not late. You can just give me your staff of authority. Let me hold it. The day you bring the animal, bring it back to me. Then you can collect your staff. Enemy at work. Hear me, powers I want to waste you and would like you to surrender your destiny for little mistake. May that never be you. And guess what? He handed over the staff and slept with the woman. And the day he brought the animal, he gave the swear and said, go and give that harlot and collect my staff and go there. He asked people, say, where are those, that harlot? They say, no, there's never a harlot. He said, the other day we saw harlot. He said, maybe by mistake, that's not their stand. Move forward. He said, no. He went back to Judah and said, we couldn't find that woman. And Judah somehow was bothered. Be like, where you use your Bible to pay harlot? And the Judas, uh, the Judas didn't bother. And one day, there was a news that Tamar has conceived a widow. And at that time, it's an abomination for a widow, a woman without a, a, a husband to conceive. And the news broke out. And Judah happened to be the leader. And they reported to the palace and said, There's a, this woman, who, number one, is a widow in the palace. Number two, she's conceiving. We need to know who is responsible for this. When they asked the woman, the woman said, No, I will not talk until you take me to palace. So they took her to palace. All the men they gathered to hear this woman. You have done abomination. When the judge had shouted on her, Judah was sitting down. Because the day he slept with her, she covered face. But now, this is the real woman showing her with pregnancy. After much shouting, after much argument, and he put her in her bag and bring out the staff and the singlet. He said, the man that owns this in the land of Israel, He's the one that owns this pregnancy. When Judah saw it, and the people saw it, they know it's only one man that have it. And that is the king. Now guess what? This woman, have you ever asked yourself, I have seen one error that bothers me as a man. Ay, ay, ay. A man who could not have a child in his home, the moment he step out of his home, he will give a woman belly. Have you not noticed that? God, the devil wants to mess you up. And you see some men, they'll be celebrating, say, hey, God, don't give me a child. God has given you a load. I mean, devil, not even God, devil has given you a load, generational load to carry. Now, guess what? At the end of it all, Judah say, okay, no problem. I, I, the fault is mine. I, bear the, I take the responsibility. Now, what happened? This woman gave birth to twins. 
What, she, what he, she, he committed was not abomination, but an incest. Are you with me? For his, if he have gone to another woman, not your own biological son's wife, and this woman gave back to two men, twins, and they came out. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 2. Let me show you why it was difficult for David to enter palace. Are you with me here? He said, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his what? Tenth generation. Shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord? So when Judah died, there was no man to take over the throne. Because what they have was a child out of wrong move. There, was a, two, there were two sons, but no one can take over the throne because they didn't come from the wrong, the right leg. I pray for you. May foundation never misplace you. I, I didn't hear your amen. May foundation never mess you up. May foundation never mess you up. May your foundation never mess you up. Somebody had a fire. Sit down. Now, did you know what? The throne was lost. God said, up to how many generations? Tenth generation. This throne was lost out of carelessness. But someone needed to fight to get it back. Now listen, if David received that anointing and did not engage in that fight against Goliath, he would have been a king with oil. I've seen so many kings with oil that does not have palace. I'm telling you the truth. I've seen men who tell you, say, I've seen a man who says he's a medical doctor but no certificate. He can't practice in this house. Thank God for God until he was delivered. I've seen a man who, who came from a wealthy home but yet he's begging for food. The Bible says, I've seen one error on the planet Earth. We are fools and wrong, you know, moving on the horseback and kings are tricky. Stretch your hand and pray for you. The oil of kingship upon your head will never be in vain. If it has hold anyone in your family as you turn that amen traitor, you are liberated. Sit down. Listen, I'm talking about the prize for your manifestation. He said, shall he not enter? When they anointed David, yes, you have the oil, but can you enter the palace? No way. Chapter 17, from verse 41. What happened? And it, it, it was told, I come again, and it be told thee that thou hast heard of it and inquired diligently. Media, I told you 41. No, take me go where I don't know. First Samuel 17 41. Huh? I don't have the whole time, please. Ask. Or somebody read for me with your, from your own Bible. If you stick on with Bible. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bear the shield went before him. Verse 42. And when the Philistine looked up, up, about and, and saw David, he disdained him. And he was but a youth. But what? But what? But what? Tell your neighbor I can handle it. Not a man, but a youth. You see, the greatest problem you have in life, when you look at yourself that you cannot handle that family, you cannot change that family. Uh, did I go to school? No, it's not by the education. Education is good, but I've seen men who went to school, but they don't get brave. What are those who went to school and they are dropout? What are those who went to school and they are smokers? It's not about education, it's about wisdom and anointing of God. I tell you, you can make it. I didn't say school is not good. Because when you go to school and you don't have Jesus, I tell you, you can still be a failure. You didn't hear what I said. Christ in me, the hope. And go ahead. Let's read. 
And when the Philistine looked about him and saw that David, okay, but um, well, he was but a youth and Rudy and of fair content and verse 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with a stiff and with a and, and, and the Philistine cursed David by his God. Listen, you see, if you are a youth, who knows what you are doing? People may not like you. You may not wear fine clothes. You, you may not measure up, but what is in the inside is big. You are like a pregnant woman. They may mock you now, but when you deliver, their mouth will close. They look at David like this. Let people look at you like this. It's even better you are not wearing fine clothes, but you have fine destiny inside. And he was shocked and said, am I, am I a dog? Verse 43, I'll be 44. Which next now? We are stopping at verse 47. And the Philistine said unto David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Verse 45. And then said David unto the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and a shell, but I come to thee. What? What did, I, what did David come with? What, what was David's weapon? The name of the Lord of hosts. Ah, yeah, yeah. The God of armies of Israel. Whom thou, that's who follow me come. You may have the machine gun, but I have God. You may have education, I have God. You may have the money, I have God. When you have money and you don't have God, that money is temporary. But when you have God, you have everything. Did you hear what I said? And if you truly born again, you love God, I tell you, no matter what happened, your story will change that family. I don't like your amen. I, I don't like your amen. amen. Now listen. Those things cannot just happen. You see, when you say you are a child of God as a youth, the Bible says, by their fruit. That's Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Am I correct? Media, give it to me. I love that scripture. Matthew 7 verse 20. Media, are you with me? Oh. We are for by their what? You shall do what? No, then. Now, let me tell you what makes you a child of God as a youth. You will love God with all your heart. No, they will not, they will not tell you to dress well. They will not tell you the kind of friends to follow. You will respect your parents because you know that your own children. Let me tell you. If when you respect your parents, it's not a sign of foolishness or you are weak. It's a sign that you are laying a foundation for tomorrow. When you are doing things right as a youth, not because you can't do what others are doing, because you are conscious of your tomorrow. Because whatever we are doing today is a seed waiting for time to manifest. When you help your parents at home as a young girl, not because you cannot disobey. Maybe you can even have younger ones who don't want to do. Bend down. The difference between now and tomorrow is time. Because if you are a good lady, a young girl who respect, honor your parents, you will not give birth to stubborn children. That's what it means. But if you are a stubborn youth, you may burn five. We'll be like you. Then you know, say 20 and 20. Am I talking here? You are a young girl who talk back at your mother. You, you don't have respect. Don't worry now. You go burn your time. You give birth to your type. You know, some people don't believe they are stubborn until when they burn their type. Have you seen a man who tells you, say, I stubborn for my, very few. So when you're doing what is right, because of God, you have the fear of God. And David, you know the story, conquered and won Goliath. Now, but let me show you why you must be careful with what you do. So that hear the let no man despise you, but you can also despise yourself. You can never sleep in Benin and wake up in America. Even if you be witch, <laughs> walk. You can only travel in the spirit and come back. As long as your flesh is here. So be careful of what you are doing. Pray, yes, prayer is good, but do things right. Follow good friends. Lay good foundation for your tomorrow. Whatever that is helping me today is how I started my life. 
Life is a choice. Am I talking here? Have that fear of God. Number two, follow good friends. Because people you follow, if they cannot make you, they will scatter you. Number three, contentment is important. One of the things that has made so many of our young girls harlot, partial harlot with Bible speaking in tongue, in a greed, in a covetousness. You want everything where your eyes see, you want all. To see who we are pola today, when we are pola on Sunday. You see who we are flash shoe today, you want to wear it next tomorrow. You see who we are black gold, you will go and goggle it and know how much is black. How many when your salary is 10,000? And if you are meeting up to buy these things, it's either you are a criminal or you are a harlot. For first Timothy chapter 6, as he says, for godliness with contentment is a great gain. Somebody say contentment. The best fabric is still in the factory. Number what now? Number four, in everything you need, in everything you desire, seek the will of God. What did I say? Oh, you didn't talk to me. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus prayed, say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In everything you desire, what did I say you should seek first? Now, this is why you see so many young ladies as married fools. Because you are, look, you are looking for a sagging boy who wears jeans with canvas. You didn't cross check what was the inside. You are looking for who is carrying GLK. He never consigned about his spiritual life. That he can marry you today and use your hair for GLK for tomorrow. But if you pray, listen, most of our young girls today know they pray again. I, when I watch what is happening in, in social media, I see say prayer for marriage, no day again. Now just, will you marry me? Yes! Yes! Because I'll see your shoe, I'll see your car, and I'll see your phone. Ah, God punish the devil. Before they, they pray, no. Sisters that are praying, one brother told me, say, he called a sister, he pray, will you marry me? And they, say, every day, as a sister, I say, God, I have not spoken. Every day, he came to me and said, I say, can I tell you, God has spoken. He said, but she said, no, God. I said, can I, let me give you the message that God said. He said, my pastor, but how? I said, the answer is that there is somebody is high in option A. If that one didn't show up, it would take you as half bread. He go manage you. So before I manage you, find your way. He said, but if it's the will of God, I say it cannot be the will of God. Anybody that is not contented with you for now, if he marry you tomorrow, go they do it like this. At times he will tell himself because I just managed. If 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 if, if, if Henry have agreed as we have, we have planned. If he, but once I have accepted, don't go for day, yeah. At times, go tell you, I don't blame you. Not night, but once I not blame. We go Italy, no come back. You know, if you remember, sir, they here. Yeah. I told him, I said, find your way. She's not ready. How can you be praying for seven months, eight months? God have not spoken. How long will you pray? And she's not praying because she's waiting for somebody. And the family is mounting pressure. It was at last the boy came to me and said, Yes. I say, tell her, I say, my dear, don't pray. God has spoken to me, no need. And he went and told him, I said, God has spoken. He said, hey, but you could have waited for me. He said, no, no need to wait for you. I wait for it for eight. I have waited for eight months. And when he heard that the boy has found a wife, the boy was waiting for God so kind. He also came back from Europe and came back with a white lady for marriage here, for court marriage. And I see, I saw what the pastors were. He was calling the boy. He said, why not? He would have waited for me. I said, wait for what? So hear this. As a young boy, if you marry a lady that is never contented, you can never satisfy her. And as a young girl, if you marry a boy who is a, a lazy boy, you 
you'll be feeding him like agri fowl. And I hear this. Let me say this. I know this is not a part of my message today. I want to talk about it, but let me say a little part of it and leave it on Sunday. You are married. You, you believe you are due for marriage. Yes. But you don't need to marry also as a husband. Young girl, when a boy will engage you, come to marry you and approach you for marriage, pray first. And as you pray, along the line of pray, find out why you engage you, whether or not your bank account is engaging or your family. Because some believe say your family is visa ticket to America. Because you have heard it that most of your brethren or your siblings are abroad. Oh, you never know. Oh, you didn't know. Because he's, that one, have, they have denied him many times or maybe you have never been able to meet up to travel. You believe that you are the American visa. And if he marry you and America, no work. Marriage is over. Because what do you find coming? You know, and even if you marry that person, carry and go to America, he will disappoint you. You are not hearing me. And I want the sisters in this house because I will still say it on Sunday if I have the time. Because most times convention like this, I talk to you. You are in for a relationship and you are marrying a young boy or you agree to marry a young boy. He has not even given your family a cup of water. He has started beating you. If he ever call you and notice that your phone is engaged and the moment you ask, you ask me, who is calling you? I called you for over seven minutes and he's still ringing engaged. You didn't see my phone? And then, before I see you, don't, didn't I know people before? It is isn't a love. Now monitoring spirit. <laughs> I, am I preaching here, youth? Yeah. That's it, no be love. You just met a monitoring spirit. You have to lose yourself and let yourself go. Whenever he meets you, he will look at your phone and say, <laughs> let me see your phone. At times he may even tell you, say, can I use your phone? You act because you want to prove that I have free mind. He said, this person called you two ta three times today. Sorry, oh, sorry. Not that I'm checking your phone. <coughs> he called this one. This call lasted for five minutes. That's about seven minutes again. He called again. This call lasted, you never know he married a mathematician. Lasted for another four minutes. And he called again after 15 minutes. What we are you really discussing? Uh, by the way, who is this man? Because I know he's a man. How you take know him? Oh, I didn't know anybody before I met you. With all the whole school, all the places you have been for these 20 years of your life, you didn't meet anybody before you met him. How long you met him? Three months ago. And he's asking that have been existing for more than six years. I mean, what, more than 26 years. That question does it make sense? I could tell you what did the man talk. At times he wants to know your account balance. And you mush your sleep. You know, sisters, eh? If they don't praise you small, call you name, charge you like battery, you will start misbehaving. Oh. And those bad boys, they know how to. Uh, how do they, uh, they say the high fee, right? They hype you. You come off online. You, you will not even know where you give on your passbook, give on your phone, give on your ATM card. Give, tell them my pin is 0057. <laughs> even when you are coming, as you are coming to service now, is the one holding your phone and your ATM card. Where may you hear my again? Listen, let me tell you this. Any real man who wants to marry, I'm talking to sisters now, does not need one naira from you even to pay your diary. Anyone that says, support me, make I marry you, wrong. Wrong, wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. If you use your own money to pay your diary, who is your husband? Now you marry yourself. So you're alone. Am I preaching here? I know brothers will be angry. Say, Pastor, why are you talking like this? You tell you, say, no, things are too hard. He things are too hard. Have you not been preparing for marriage? Listen, I'm, 
I mean, I, I am married for about 20 years now. Check marriages that are having issues. When a man is never contented with what belongs to him, he wants to marry. Especially when you are a woman who is doing well in business, you are doing well in your career. Let me ask you a question. For example, you went to school, you studied well, and you begin to work and marry this man. Even though you make money, he's not his right, my dear. If, if there's anybody to ask, is your parents who spend millions of naira, and yet they let you go without taking what you have. And you'll be asking, how much is your salary? I, 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 do you know, a woman told me that the husband went to private school where she teach 7,000 and told him, say, if this woman be teaching here, you'll be paying the salary in my account. I think my husband be that. Hunchback. Hunchback. Brothers, listen to me. Real men are satisfied. Even though your wife is richer than you. I have never one day asked my wife how much you have. And I don't care to know how much. It's my duty to help her. And to take care of her. And I'm telling you truth. This is one why so many women are suffering. So they are the one working. The man is the one consuming. The day you don't bring, you take slap. You release your ATM card by force. If you do, they, they, if you, and you know the worst part they didn't want to collect money from you he become honey, sweetie he, he needs something sister you need to marry you need independence in marriage don't marry bondage you are a sister, tell a fellow sister you need freedom not bondage do you know some ladies marry they cannot visit their father's house none of your siblings is permitted to come around you in your family, husband family, there are laws. Number one, law number one, you must not greet a man outside. Number two, you must not open your teeth while you are greeting a man. Even inside the church, don't look at any man's face. Look at the altar. <laughs> marry what? Now God, you marry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Check women who they are honored in their marriage. They have freedom. They last long. And check the man who is giving you this condition. He cannot even buy a pump slippers. You are the one buying for your own, buying for him. Yet you don't have peace. Please, I beg you. Sisters, are you listening to me? Because I'll pray for you. My husband will come. My own is to pray. Now you go select. If I pray for you, finish. You go select or click a husband, come. <laughs> I they warn you now. If I pray this prayer today, finish. You go select Okrika. Last grade of Okrika, come. As you see, cloth to get grade and get level. Now, so husband, be you. Some married in a kai kai. Where your husband? He said, he like, no, they first stay one place. At times you see some women, with the, and at times you see some good woman. Beautiful. Well educated, marry rubbish. At times, not delay. And that's why tonight I want to pray for you. May the altar of delay be broken. Yeah. When a man no get job, you can go to any job. That's the thing. But if you go school finish and get the rightful job, I'm telling you, life will settle. But imagine when you read, you, you, you read accounting. And now you're working in a mechanic workshop. To help them bring, save them. They are counting their pass. And your mates are in bank. So, sister, and above all, I want to say, I will reserve the remaining on Sunday. Is this? May you never marry a man that will always suspect you. Yeah. Any marriage that does not have trust does not have tomorrow. Now, look at, imagine me now. With all this busy I am, I will come, I will go carry my wife home. Check who call her. And the transactions for the day. Eh? Three men who God is blessing, no one is doing that. Have you not seen some women today who are multi-millionaires under a husband, doing their own things with all freedom and happiness? But when you marry a Aburo, most of these Agaf boys who are lazy, they want to already made. I have seen many of them before. They will tell you, somebody will just touch me 10 million like this. I'll just pay 
Daddy, I just get visa. I just travel to America like this. If I even go there, I'll just do one lottery. You know, say they like bet. Bet. They can bet anyhow. So I'll just play American lottery like this. I'll win like $10 million. Oh boy, I'll come back. Buy Rolls Royce. Benigo, here I am. <laughs> you are the dreamer. <laughs> Here with me, shout I'm here. Yeah. You must pay a price. Work hard. You are permitted to start small. And if you start small with good understanding on the word of God inside of you, you will end it big. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Though your beginning may be small, but your end shall be better. Yeah. And please, as a young boy, let me advise you small. On Sunday, I will talk about your own. My prayer for you, may you never marry a woman with big pass you. Amen. <laughs> you know what I said now? So sister, I was saying, Pastor, why did you say so? Some men, they their house, they are like house boy. They said uh, when man maltreat a woman, what do they call it? Woman abuse, right? They still get man abuse. I've seen. A man go see wife with a jerk. I didn't say you would not love the woman, but you, may you never marry who big pass you. But brothers, let me say this. Thank God this is, let me, I, I think, let me conclude. I will leave the, part, the other part of the message. Let me advise you. You know, I have seen one error at times. At times, I'll see some error at times when I go some places. Or some people I know before, they think oh, they pay me. Because when you see marriage that is divinely arranged, you go, no. And when you see the one that is up, off point, you not go talk about your mind, go tell you, say, this one, nah, or the brother Chuku. Anyhow, way be. See, listen, brothers, let me warn you. If you marry a woman who is older than you, I have no problem about it. If God led you, not money led you. In the situation you marry your husband, finish. When they tell you, say, and you are a man, you, you marry, finish. They show you, you are always ashamed to present your wife. I don't know whether you have seen situation like that. At times, when the man and the woman, one goes on, they go say, they go and they come. <laughs> and you know, some youth and the children of the hour days, they will talk the one way they say, they no talk. By the time they call, say, Mr. and Mrs. You see, some girls, when no get man, I go say, hmm. I go talk and today, I go talk and make you hear. Come marriage now once they, they marry. But if polygamous spirit follow you, go marry the first one, make mistake, go marry the second one, your story don't start. Sisters, I told you, one of, I think I'm going to re repeat that seminar this year before Christmas, if I have my time, one of the days. And I remember, I think that message, message that time, I tagged it before you say it. Oh, I don't know whether you remember that teaching. Before you say, I do. You must know what you want to do before you say, I do. Because if you don't know what you want to do, go say, you do. <laughs> and one of, I remember one of the things I, I preached that time. I said, you must know your choice in marriage. Don't settle until you get your choice. You didn't hear what I said. If you are a man, you like a black woman, keep waiting and praying until you see that picture you saw. You like a weapon, sister. Wait for until you see a weapon. <laughs> Do you know why? If you get your choice, you can pay the price to make happiness to work. You see, relationship, there is always happiness. But you see, when you get what you got, it just make a manage. If any pain hits you, you cannot bear it. I'm talking to you now, to a sister, to you as a brother. But brothers, marry. According to the will of God. Forget how it is. Things may be too rough. If you marry a woman, let it be that God led me. I didn't look at I didn't look at family. I didn't look at pocket. I didn't look at anything. God, let me tell you, brothers. Brother, can I tell you this one? Then I pray for you. Don't allow big bags of sisters to deceive you. They don't have money. Those big bags, big handbag. Sister, 
be sincere, all sisters, let me see your hand back today. Raise it up for me like this. Oh, when I born again, well, well, <laughs> I don't see some big, big ones like that. Now, Sunday, go see their real hand, you know, be today. They are coming from work. They are real bag, they be like traveling bag. And at times, she talk, maybe because he here says she they want for bank. It is saying, I'm money, I did load there. Who told you? She not get transport. Some of them now both mirror, call, call shoe, because shoe way we are too tight. At the time, you had to change shoe. They know what I'm talking about. All of them, they inside that bag. So at times, when you see the big bag, where she they draw every time, where they shine, you go say, oh, money today. Now lie. Are you listening to me? Don't marry Abola. Abola, they break. Don't marry long hair. Some long hair, they smell. Don't marry pancake. The reference is inside. Oh, I think I will leave you today. <laughs> I think I love that news. I saw, I heard three years ago. Hey, I think I heard that news on a local news. A man in America who married a woman. And after they finished wedding, they came back home. He not said they are married there, get as if you not be like our own. He said when the woman went to the bedroom and she took a shower and came out, he said, is it you? He said, it's me. And the man went to court. He said, no, this is a scam. You know, those makeup artists, they won't make heaven. They won't make heaven. They won't make, they, they, ah. stand to your feet. Let me leave the other part of it. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I'm going to continue because there are some things I need to show you from that scripture. Because I have to deal on this one because not only you did this all. Please, when it comes to marriage, open your eye away. If you know the sea way, go buy glass. Even to you as a brother, even to you as a sister, get your choice and get your type. Now, do you know how it look like you that love prayer? You marry tomorrow. You say, maybe we pray. Your wife goes, say, I don't feel like praying. I'm tired. Let's go to church. He said, can't we rest today? There's rain now. I tell you, something is wrong. If, you, if she not win you, you win her. Have you not seen some brothers who are active? They, the moment they marry, they lost their faith. Now the wife, Nike, the, the strength. And there are some sisters who are vibrant, prayer warrior, but they married. Nobody sees them in the church. Because they marry the opposite direction. Please pray. If you, can, if you don't know, if you pray, if you didn't see the vision, come to me. I will give you direction. But don't, me, I'm not going to tell you who it be. Because the one I talked before, it didn't come out well. Because I told one of my sons that I said, don't marry her. This woman will not favor you. And he said, eh, I didn't know they have already concluded with the girl. But I told him as a son, I said, this girl, no befit your status. You are a good son. And he take me go play love. Go tell the girl, say, Papa, say, me cannot marry you. <laughs> and trust sisters, how it to be. My name enter front page of newspaper. How oh, the whole church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, of the, one of my daughter came to me and said, Now you talk. The, the so sister said, You told the, one, the brother that want to marry her not to marry her. I said, Now me talk. Oh. Now me. <laughs> now me talk. I'm not going to lie. He said, Don't be me. I'll talk. Now, now, pure and direct. I told him that that's not his type, that the man should look for his type. He's a good man. He said, the girl, just the talk. He said, people could do. I said, even me, I doubted it. I said, I mean, he said, Papa, oh, she didn't, couldn't say anything. So I called the girl, I called the brother into my office. I said, sit down. They sat down. I said, sister, I heard what you said. Brother, here, I say, what I told you confidentially, you went to tell her. She, he couldn't talk. I said, but I'm not angry. Sister, I apologize. My mouth, shut up. I said, fix your date. I will wed you. Sleep, go believe who wants sleep. And uh, we have to rush their wedding and they marry. If you see the man today asking how far, now there I will leave you. Ask him how far. Listen, when you marry your type, you may not become the richest, but two of you go feel follow. But when you marry against your direction, imagine where you are the one gathering, your wife is the one wasting. 
You plant things, let you things. Say, can't you give me money to buy gold? Can't you give me money to buy gold? Just look at your mates. And to you give, gather that thing. I've seen a man, money would have used to buy land. The wife divided it into two to buy. He had to give the woman to get peace. And today, they are still on, on rent. The wife says, is it this small money you give me that, that will make you not to buy land again? Your mate, who is doing well, they buy gold of one million for their wife and they are still building. There is a difference between wife and knife. Oh. And brother, don't marry because she is beautiful. Some can be beautiful but not useful. Handsome and very useless. No marry, no marry saggy, no marry jeans. Marry man. Real men love their wife. They sacrifice for their family. One day my wife asked me, say, why do you do things the way you do? Even though you don't have that time. I said, because I love my family. My children, you see them? I, I, I go buy things for them. I have that time. No matter how busy I am. Can you say last time I supposed to... I have, to, I, I have preached in this house. Because when my children was small, I will bring money, give my wife. They would go and buy them clothes. When I come and say, mommy buy shoe. Mommy buy clothes. Mommy buy. He says, yes. Okay. I told my wife, I said, no. From today, you no longer buy. If my wife say, I'm not even enjoying it going to market. I said, I will go. I'll find means I'll be buying. This name must change. And today, ask them everything they wear. Now, daddy, buy. Maybe mommy. But my wife don't even know their size. That is it. Real men will always want their home to be, their wife to be happy. You don't cry, give them. It's in their gene. It's in their system. It's their dream. It's their prayer. That's what they prayed for. But what of when you marry a man? A man, something happened far back. A man, what, he and the wife, they went to Thanksgiving. The wife said, honey, please find me money to snap preacher. The man turned, preacher. He said, don't worry. So I will call the artist where they in the house, make him moody. <laughs> Maybe if you don't know how you are, I will call. I'm telling you, they, they think cost quarter. Man. Picture that time, whether not 50 night or 100 night. He said, I will call artist to mood you for our sitting room. Okay, that kind of man can come back and buy you ice cream, right? When he give you money for Santana for money. <laughs> now, you see why? Most times I have to say this. Listen, I'm going to have Youth Summit this year. I want to teach you some things. <laughs> Listen, I did this many years ago. And I'm going to want to create, even if one day before Christmas, or maybe we can do it as a last year program. And if I want to do it, I will advertise it earlier. It will be one Saturday morning. We'll teach, we'll put it on live. you we'll ask me your question. Do you know why? The greatest problem matter to George in a marriage matter. They will, another thing will be their problem. They'll be telling you another thing. Because some women no even get bored to tell their wife outside, say, now nah, this thing, I be with you, they do. Why some women cannot also say it? So, the best thing I can do is to guide you well. So, when you want to select, you will know what to select. Before you go select last grade, come out. One girl came to me and said, he they beat me, pray. May God, may God change him. It's not his eye. I said, who am I praying for? He said, my husband. I said, where is he? He's in the church. He said, no, he doesn't go to church. Oh, you brought it. Put it upon him. Make her pray. What happened? He said, do you know what happened? This woman will be sleeping. At, he said, one of the days he was sleeping, he was hearing blow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The man will smoke Morocco finish. Enter house. If it's anything we see, go to kick up. He said, no, be I. I said, not my eye. <laughs> May you never sell it that kind of work on this house. <laughs> say, no, be I. No, not my eye. Now my hand wrap and put for him out. He said, no, pastor, if they think clear for him, I go to cry. I go to cry. I say, oh. Me, I see the cry full up. <laughs> I told them in this church some time ago, a hey boy, the mama bring and come. Say, hey, now witchcraft to my enemies. So. I said, no, be witchcraft. 
How that much mama was arguing because some mother loved to cover their children. Thank God for somebody who came. I asked that, I asked the mama, he know they smoke. His mama no greet her. The boy do hand like I said, my brother, talk to me. He said they smoke. I tell mama, this is no witchcraft, now moral craft. Now moral craft. He said, okay, my pastor, anyone will be cast it out. I said, no. Witchcraft is castable, but moral craft, that one can go for body. Because you are the one who caused yourself damage. Bible says, he that break an age, serpent will bite. Now listen now. I'm serious. It may sound funny, but look at me as a sister. Your family, how many have married well? How many still waiting the way you are waiting? Those who marry, how many of them really have a blissful home? When you come and said, my sister marry well. Even though you know they give you, but you go see them from far and say, oh God, I beg. I want this kind of marriage. How many of how many? If you know they, or you are a, a brother here, check your brothers. How many of them married well? Some of you, your brothers marry, forget the parents. It becomes a pattern. Some of them marry, they can't even feed themselves. Have you not heard some men they say, now since we married? Not that the woman is a witch, but it's a pattern. I want to spoil the home. And most times it's always an injury to a woman to hear saying, "Since sister, why I enter this house? Talk to me as a sister. I'm a, you go be like saying, I may be bad luck. And most I have seen a man beating the wife. Say, I, go, I will beat you till you run out of this house. He said, since the day you enter here, and I'm only the run for me. Which, I'm telling you to. And she no one go. Because all that's woman, they don't run, come back. The mama won and say, please, anyhow, wait, be stay. Uh, her name become endurance. In the Yamaka. You are going to pray. If it's a pattern, me, King Silly, I made up my mind. I cannot continue. If it's a story, I must change it. And number two, Jake, if others have been married well, it will be an error for your own. Come be saying, I be the one where no good. There are some families when sisters marry, they find picking. Begin pray now. If you have been seeing such things in your family that your brothers marry, they find it difficult. Don't wait till you start getting want to marry. Begin to declare it. I will not find it difficult. These are things I did in my life. These are things I did. Listen, one of the day I will teach you, I'm going to show you things that really helped me. In one day, my first son called me recently. 18 years plus. He came to my room. He said, tell me how you do what you do. He began want to start asking me because I said, boy, wait, one day we are going to have a meeting. You carry your daughter, come. Hence, you want to know all I do, the way I do it. I love that. It's interesting. I'm telling you, I told you, I suffered, I run, follow me, but I one thing in me, even as I was working with people, what, how I want to, want to live my life is right inside of me and it's my prayer point. I keep dreaming it. As a man, think it. So he is. Listen, number one, those things happening in your family is your prayer point. Pray yourself out of it. And number two, position yourself. Position yourself. Life is a choice. It cannot just happen. You make it happen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must make it happen. It's a choice. You must declare to yourself, I must be able to do this. If you cannot do it, it will not, it will not happen. Even though somebody is ahead of you, listen, let it not bother you. You know, journey of, uh, journey of destiny overtaking is still permitted. You will get there. But if your parents, your father or your mother didn't marry well, my dear, pray hard. My father, my late father happened to be a pastor, but he didn't go far. These are one of the things that bust my brain when I had calling. I told God, I want to answer God, not like my father. And thank God today. Now, if you notice any of these things, your family, people find it difficult to feed. Now, hand to mouth from beginning to end. Run to the altar. The first prayer we want to pray, pattern. Every pattern I met in that house. I can see I killed that pattern. I refuse to continue with that pattern. You are not hearing me. 
shall be my father, my maker. Every ungodly pattern that have been existing in my family. I can see it. I refuse to continue. I wish you can go on your knee. I wish you can pray this way from your heart. Every pattern in marriage, pattern in education, pattern in achievement, pattern in finance, in the name of Jesus, I break out of every ungodly pattern have existed in Mongo family. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Listen. Now, let me show you one scripture. Media, give it to me. While you are still on your knee. Psalm 51 verse 5. Psalm 51 verse 5. This is, now everybody read. What did he say? Read again. An insane now listen, many of us would like to serve God but many times we see ourselves running back like others in our family who don't like God there are things in our family we vow not to do have you not heard Paul who say things I never wish to do those are things I find myself, be sincere I tell you there are some things you take God say no, not me again, but before you know you are right there there are some friends who say no, because there is a pattern that is dragging you, shout the father in the name of Jesus Whatever follow, that followed my mother or my father that is following me, break and scatter or your pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now listen, there are families who wear ladies know they marry on time. Now let me tell you, there's many of us, you are what you are today because your own mother married on time. But, it, but when you look at your father's family now, you discover that a lot of people marry when it's already late. Woman time, they pass away. That's the truth. When you just go for me, but the woman who married at the age of 50, what are your chances of having children? What are your chances of training those children? Now, can you compare yourself with a woman who married at 18, 20, 22? Talk to me. What is the difference? You see a woman who married at the age of eight, less, less than 20, I mean less than 30. You see them and their daughters or their son. At times you see, my God, as I'm saying, your junior brother. I don't know whether you are seeing situations like that. I don't know whether you are seeing where some girls will tell you, say, this is my mom. You will be confused, say, your mom. I've been at your senior sister. I'm telling you the truth. I saw a woman in this house one day. I said, where are your children? No. Two of them came to see me the other side. Me and the two daughters. I'll be one of the daughter. No, the, the daughter. I didn't know. So they were, in that one hold on for sure that they come. I said, oh, you and your friend want to see me. He said, yeah, they have been waiting. I said, sorry, sorry. Let me see you and your friend. He said, which my friend? I said, now he called, you know, say mothers know how they, they prove themselves. They cock the girl. The girl say, now mommy, what, why? And I know, say, now. Now the daughter, no be friend. Even if you see the daughter, even get body passing, mama. I think, say, now, the girlfriend. And at last, when the nana raised story, he said he gave birth to that girl at the age of 18. He married early. Because the man who wanted to marry her, he insisted, the family said, hence, the man agreed. And she didn't know anything. Say she, that was how she entered that marriage. But the good thing is this. A woman who married at the age of 18, I mean, and conceive and get birth before 20. That's to say when she's about 36, she have a girl of about 18. Early to bed, early to rise. 
Shout it. I reject delay. Shout it. Every spirit of delay. Following me around. Pray. Oh, you're praying. it. Power that said not yet time. In Jesus name we pray. Now stand up. Look at my conclusion. Get me that oil. Get me the oil. Now I want you to go and take a seed. But if it's possible you have up to 1,300 pick it as your seed. But if you don't have up to that whatever you have. But if it's possible 1,300 David was 17 when they anointed him, but he became a king at the age of 30. He was delayed. Now, take that seed, come to the altar. Come and stand here. Don't drop the seed yet if you have it. The prayer we're going to pray, and I want to put oil on your hand. Even after you drop the seed, you stand by this altar, past the decree. Lord, I pull my head from the stories and the pattern of my father's house. Whatever that have dealt with other young boys will not deal with me. I escape. Whatever that have held other young girls, me, even some of you, you thought by now you have settled every day, nearly, nearly, but yet nothing happens. Nothing like things happening at the right time. Talk to me. When you are still very healthy and very young. Now, do you notice one thing? Let me tell you to be sincere. Check young ladies who married less than 30. Conception is fast. Delivery, very fast. Because this is, the, their, their strength is too much. When, when a woman is conceiving from 40 upward, you are bound to fall into oppression. You are bound to begin to deliver through oppression. Even to a man. Nothing like you as a man. When you come out like this, see your son. You'll be glad. There's a man I know those days when we are in New Guinea Market. Every Sunday morning, here in Songo, where they see, go to play for field. You see, we are in boy, they dribble him inside field. Even at the early stage, I didn't know his, his boy, his son. Why? He married on time. Something happened years ago when I was selling the new Benin market. We, we, I went to where to eat. I saw a man who we are eating there, talking to the woman, selling food. When I entered to eat, I overheard him talking. My son in Europe, my son in Europe just brought me something. So, after much, and I said, oh, God, sorry, oh, you are, your son, have you your brother? He told He said, my son. He said, I'm 40. My son is 21. Now I shout, you are 40. Because I look at him as a young man. He said, my son is 21. I said, hey. The man asked me, he said, you never marry? He was asking me. He said, I should go village, go ask them, what did they worry me? He don't turn to me, so I say, so I got sorry. No, I, I, he said, me never marry as I did talk, so. He said, they worry me for village. Man, go village. Go set to sort some things out. That is so, that the wife he married was 18. He said, was 19. It didn't happen like that. It's no easy like that. Because I discovered he was an only son. So they pushed him in early marriage. He was 19 and married a girl of 18. Two of them begin to born. Their first son, now the in-laws, they carried the boy, travel. The boy at the age of 21, because it is in Europe, they don't they bring something. Even that boy traveled before 19 years, and he's 21 at that time. So he don't even send money come for his papa. He didn't make money there. My son, my son brings up. If you see his story there, even when he said that to me, I was happy. I was like, God, child, see people who are privileged. Now, that man, from what I discovered, he was not doing a good work. Now, listen. Money may not come, but there's nothing good like starting something on time. So that your mistake will not repeat two times. You didn't hear what I said. Lift up that seat, shout the Father. In the name of Jesus. I disconnect out of delay. In the name of Jesus. Every delay hanging on my head. Break. Every seed of delay planted against work of family. 
by this little token i disconnect myself out of delay and stagnation in the name of jesus shout that name jesus three times then you pray or you pray In Jesus' name. Please, youth, I want to hear your amen very strong. Amen. I said we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, number two, you are going to speak to that seed. Tell God from now to next year, September. If you are a girl, put a date. If you are a brother, tell God how you want to position. Did you hear what I said? Shout it, Father. I release, a seed. I release a seed. For what? I release this, I release this seed. I release For what? For that from now to when? I can see it. I position myself financially in the name of Jesus. By this time, 2024, I will have voice. My testimony will be heard. Your marriage will be made. What will happen? Shout that name, Jesus, three times. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Open your mouth. Declare it in a few minutes. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lift up that seed. Let your amen sound three times. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to anoint you. And you place that seed on the altar. Don't go back. Now as I place that oil. Even though you put her tie. You can drop that for her tie. Touch oil on your head. David was anointed. And that oil did not touch, not his hand, upon his head. Tell God, position me. He caused me to manifest. Give me evidence. Now, prayer is not just prayer until there is what? Evidence. I go soon do this. No, no. Now I'm doing this. Lord, by this time next year, I want to graduate. Glorious graduation. You know what it is? You're married in this house, everybody heard it. That God settled you as a young man. Settled you. I want, I want, to, uh, people, want my voice to be heard. I want to have something to show. If it's an altar, let it go down. Now, place that seed on the altar. I, I will give you oil. Then use your two hands, touch that oil. Put on your head. If possible, remove your head tie. Let it touch your hair. Tell God. In the name of Jesus. Don't go back. You can only give, give space for those at your back for me to touch their hand, for them to drop their seed. Drop that seed. Then I give you oil. Now begin to decree. Say, by the reason of this anointing, Lord, I manifest. I manifest. In that area of my expectation, call that thing. Be bold to declare it. Let your request be made known. If I drop oil, allow those at your back to come out.
Tell yourself, I'm not by the head. But how about shots here? Move around now. My head carry oil. I'm a child of destiny. I see myself shining. I can never be stranded. My destiny helper. Destiny helper in form of marriage. Financial helper. If you can pray in tongue, come on, go ahead. Command those things to come. Hallelujah. Hana si alleluia. Chi o bebeo. O bebeo. Ti mosi di neli gue. Hana si alleluia. Hana si alleluia. Chi o bebeo. Now command your marriage, command your business blessing, command your favor, command turn around. Command it. Command it. Say out it Lord, this is my time. This is my season. We pray in Jesus' name. Lift up those hands. 
Yes. Any, any spiritual uniform, they know your family spiritually as a mark of failure. Delay, marital delay, setback, rejection, never succeed. Premature death. Had, found it difficult to succeed in marriage. Delay in childbirth, delay in marriage, delay academically, delay spiritually. That garment, that evil uniform. Somebody watching me that that garment they know your family spiritually that look like school uniform that everybody is wearing right now. There is an angel here changing your own. I see the hand of God changing it, pulling it out of your life, pull it out of her, pull it out of him. Yes, Lord. Oh, shall help me. Lift up those hands. Today, whatever mark you have been known spiritually, whatever they know your family that is not good, you, you are out of it. In the name of Jesus, you are out of it. In the name of Jesus, you are out of it. From today, I pass decree. No man will despise you. You will not be despised among your equals. In this generation, you will not be despised. Receive a turn around in the name of Jesus. Everything you needed to become whom God has made you, I speak as your prophet. By this oil I have released for you. Like the oil that Samuel released for David. As you stretch your hand toward this altar, thunder amen three times, I declare you manifest. In the name of Jesus, as you thunder that amen three times, I command you manifest. Listen, you will not make mistake. If it's written in your family that people make mistake in marriage, make mistake in school, make mistake in this, you will not make mistake. More especially in the area of marriage. You will marry, you marry well. May your own marriage be the best. In the name of Jesus, may your marriage be the best. May your marriage be the best. Today, I commission your destiny to function as God has ordained it to be. In the name of God the Father. Amen. Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Swear the hand to the altar. God shall watch it. I've seen about five of them. The angel just handed over something to you. Amen. And it was too heavy for you to carry. But five of you. That's two, number one. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. There is some, there's something handed over to you. It's a good thing. Thank you, Father. That's number four. How shall watch it? The fifth one is someone who came out from family that they mock. And I hear God say, that mockery has ended. God said, I will use you to change that story. I will use you to change that family. Hamama Masia Masi. Switch your hand towards me. I feel power already. I feel power already. That thing that said is not yet time for you to settle. I hear it about four of you. Somebody let us and say, Not yet time. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I break that curse out of your head. Ha mama 
Sweat your hand. God starts to tell you, go and shine. If I be your prophet, after this convention, it will be season of marriage. I hear it clear. After this convention, from 90 Easter next year to August next year to September next year to December next year, marriage upon marriage, go and settle down in Jesus' name. You know one thing that gave me joy here? Marriages are on lineup. I, I, somebody testified on Wednesday. That one was mentioned. He said, I married this year. This is my friend married this year. That one married this year. That, I was happy. Shows that he's working. Give somebody a high five. Said, my own is settled. <laughs> May we share the grace in fellowship. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely. God's goodness and mercy, favor and glory, anointing and power shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Go and manifest in Jesus' name. I know some brothers are going to say, Now, money I need is already settled. <laughs>